Forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, one, two. Not be easy with your boots off. In fact, you didn't already, have you? Well, I don't want to waste my day off. I'm going down the rubbery for a glass of breakfast. That'll be the end of you for the day. Oh, I don't know. I might wander back a bit in the time and uh, have a bit of a work out. say sorry. Look, don't put it across me, son. Think you own the bloody world. Oh. You bloody mum. What'd you do that for? Right, you asked for it. All right, baby, it's gone far enough. What do you want? Forget it, okay? I'm Jock Pitt. Runs a gymnasium down in Gibson Street with his brother. Yeah, Jock and Turk. I've met him. They've got a bit of form. I thought they were straight near. Must be nearly $200 in here. Oh, number seven found him. On the way out from Kinder with the son. Thought he was drunk till she saw the blood. A hell of a beating. You had any trouble with bashing around here? Not lately. We're going to talk to the woman that found him, Phil. Uh, number seven. Yeah. Then talk to the other residents, see if they saw or heard anything. You found anything, Greg? Could be. I think I might get a partial footprint. There you go. I better go and see the brother. Somebody's got to tell him. Anyone home? In here. Good day, Turk. Oh, good day, Mr. White. No, I haven't seen you since. Hey, uh, you don't think I've been. Um... No, it's nothing like that. Hmm. What's new then? It's your brother. 
Oh, the jock's been playing up. Jock's dead. He was found in an alley. Looks like he'd been bashed. Bashed, you reckon? But why? But who'd do it? Everyone liked Jock. When did you last see him? About ten. About ten this morning. He had a bit of a workout. Went to the pub. On his own? Yeah. Just to help, we take it in turns. Can you think of any reason why anyone would want Jock hurt or dead? Can you close up for a while? It's routine, too. I'm going to have to ask you a lot of questions, arrange for you to make an official identification. Lewis can't help much. She just found him. What about the others? Uh, there was a woman in uh, number four, Mrs. Scalisi. She heard yelling about 12.30, but thought it was kids. You won't get much help around here. What sort of a bloke was he? A bit rough. Soon to get on okay with people. You found something, Greg? Yeah, it's nothing much, but it might help. You can move him now. You up to a few more questions? No, later. What's the difference? There you go. What kind of people use your gym? Sportsmen, mostly. Jockeys, truck drivers. But we get all sorts. Any trouble lately? What do you mean, trouble? Well, Jock, had he, uh, had he had any blues with anyone? I don't know. If there's anything you know, Turk, tell us. Last Sunday, Sunday morning, Jock had a set to with a bloke. What bloke? Brooker. Clive Brooker? He's drawn a book, SP. That was never proved, Mr. White. Is he the same man? No. In the old days, Jock and I used to take a few bets. Well, you know that, Mr. White, but it was years ago. We knew Brooker then. The TAB came along and put us out of business. Brooker lent us the dough to open the gym. Well, why would he do that? He was known to have a flutter. Might have thought it was a good place for us to get the drum to pick up the odd tip. What was the row about? I really don't know. How bad was it? Well, both got a bit willing. Jock didn't say much, but Brooker was pretty rough on him. Any threats made? No. Oh, I, I calmed him down, gave Brooker a beer. I tried to get it out of Jock afterwards, but he wasn't saying. What do you reckon? I reckon he got into Brooker for a few bucks. He was hopeless with money. How do you mean? Well, he gambled a fair bit. Didn't know when to stop. I'll drop you at the mortuary. It's on the way. Thanks. I'll let you have the report as soon as possible, Phil. Right, Rick. You turn up any witnesses, you give us a vote. Do you know if Jock ever got into anyone else for money? Oh, everyone knew what he was like. No one had let him get into them for much. Not enough to do this to him. Including Brooker. Look, Mr. Lawson, me, Jock, Brooker go back a long way. We're mates for years. We've all had our blues, but what are mates for? OK, Turk. Thanks for your help. What about identification, Harry? Oh, uh, Phil can run him down as soon as he gets back. If you have any thoughts, let us know. That's a promise. Clive Brooker here. You have? Yeah, fine. Well, I'll... Yeah. Okay, half an hour. Well, it takes care of that. Have you heard about old Jock? Yeah. Poor old Jock. Who'd do a thing like that? Why? Look, mate, you know what he did to me last week? Cost me a grand and got me in trouble with the Sydney push. But you didn't have well, to. Well, look, I had to tell him something, didn't I? <laughs> Not sticking my own neck out. Old Jock cost him more than 20 grand. But he was your mate. Mate, nothing. If he'd have got away with it, every tin pot punter in the game would be sticking me up. I'm batting in the big league now, mate. When I told Sydney about it, they sent a bloke down to uh, work old Jock over. 
Worked him over? Yeah, just straighten him out. You bloody mug. They straightened him out, all right. He's dead. They bashed him to death. Forensic report, Reg. Oh, thanks. Mike phoned in. PM's underway, but it could be some time before the pathologist can give us a full rundown. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this? Well, it's a start. The partial sole prints from a track shoe. The stuff they found under the fingernails is interesting. Greg seems to think it could have come from a track suit. Cotton nylon mixture. Orange. All ties in with the gymnasium. Maybe. There's no guarantee it was a track suit, and what if it was? Lots of people wear them. Worth asking, too. Hmm. What'd you get on Jock's movements? Well, apparently, he went straight to the pub from the gymnasium. Didn't leave there till after 12. Drinking mates? Nobody special. Spent most of his time talking horses to the barman. What are you gonna do? We can see the cops. We didn't know... Just them. shut up. Because I'll see this mug and tell him to get the hell back to Sydney and he can whistle for the rest of his dough. You gonna let him go after what he'd done to old Jock? Well, I'm going to the cops. You wanna get charged with a big one? But I didn't know. It doesn't make any difference. I arranged for the bloke to come down and you carried the first half of his fee. Yeah, but I didn't know that he was... Accessories, mate. Before the fact, they'll charge us the same as him. <laughs> you're playing at. Money. Forget it. You're supposed to work a bloke over. What happened? Get carried away. Look, you've had all you're going to get out of me. I want no more of it. Just get back where you came from and make it fast. You disappoint me. They said you were ambitious. Look, you are... They told me to back you up. You know what that means, Mr. Brugger? That gives you the power of life. Yes. Money. I didn't bring it. Tomorrow. Okay, where? The steam room at the gym. You're nuts. His brother's there. <laughs> Ten o'clock. I'll, I'll send Freddy. Preliminary PM report on Jock Peart. Three broken ribs. Uh, nose bone and skull broken, both eardrums perforated. The base of his skull was completely separated from the spine by a blow to the back of his head. Death was due to massive brain hemorrhage. Does that suggest anything? Here. Out with it, Michael. Well, if he was attacked by a gang, he'd have a few minor injuries, bruises, scratches, sort of thing you get in a scuffle. So? All those injuries were specific and inflicted with a fair amount of force. Now, to do that sort of damage... Karate? Could be. You, uh... You think someone got a bit carried away? Uh, he was hit with at least two killing blows. It was no accident. I take it the attacker would need to be pretty skilled to do this. Yeah, but... Well, a fellow that good usually steers clear of trouble. It's... Well, it's against the whole philosophy of the martial arts. system. Strikes me this whole thing's just an excuse to raise bigger and better bashes anyway. Well, no one gets very good without a lot of hard work. It takes a long time, years. It's just too much sweat for the rat bags. They get weeded out very early on. Always? I suppose there's no guarantee. But for a student to reach a high rank and still be, well, dangerous, he'd be no rat bag. Unless he was uh, crafty enough to fake the philosophy thing. I don't know how you'd fake it. You'd need a pretty warped mind. This karate thing rings a bell with me. Sydney, I think. We're closed. Oh, it's you, mate. How you going? You're late tonight. Been busy? Yeah. And uh, no, I... I didn't think you'd be, uh... You know, with Jock and all. Yeah. About Jock, mate. I'm sorry. She's right. I know. We'll bring him back. Yeah. 
That blue jock had with Brooker. How bad was it? Don't know much about it. Hey, you don't think they climb. I don't know what to think. Brooker's the only one I know who was dirty on the job. Oh, come on, Tech. I know the boss has been getting a bit big for his boost lately, but he wouldn't go that far. That's what I told the cops. Still keep your ears open, eh? If I get on to anything, you'll be the first to know. Yeah, here we are. Eighteen months ago, Desmond John Burke was found dead in a Sydney street. He was a small-time crim and gambler. Now, the injuries that caused his death were similar to those found on Jock Peart. Eighteen months, 600 miles apart, may not mean anything. True, but in those 18 months, there was another killing in Sydney and one in Brisbane with similar injuries. Both crims. A pro killer. Intelligence reports from Sydney and Brisbane. A professional killer who uses karate. Now, rumours, nothing else. There's no names, no description. But both squads report that their contacts don't seem anxious to elaborate. What do you think, Michael? What kind of karate expert would hire himself out as a killer? Like I said before, a warped personality. Psycho. Like the little man who feels bigger when he's got a gun in his hand. Only this bloke doesn't need a gun. That'll make him much harder to find. Does the pattern of injuries tell us anything? No, not really. The styles differ, but the basic techniques are the same. How do you mean? Well, I practice Taekwondo, and that the feet are used much more than in most other styles, but in close, the hands are used in much the same way. I mean, the broken eardrums in both cases went to the same man. This fellow tends to favour a double palm strike to the ears. The results are tremendous inrush of air into both ears at the same time, causing a concussion. But that's not necessarily appointed to his style. Well, it'd tend to make him a Japanese stylist, but you're right, there's no guarantee. The same techniques are used in all schools to a certain extent. With every student, there's a tendency to pick out certain techniques that fit your best. And you'd stick to those in the fight? Yeah. Leaving aside the philosophical aspects, would a person like this really be very good? Oh, I'd say he would be. All styles are effective as a form of self-defense, but used in attack rather than defense, they're devastating. In both cases, and with Jock this morning, there's um, no sign of sloppiness. All attacks were made with full force and were dead accurate. I'm afraid he's very good. First thing tomorrow, you and Mike talk to Turk Peart again. See if we can make any connection between Jock and these other victims. Right. Phil, you better get busy tonight. Contact Sydney and Brisbane, see if they've dug up anything more on this bloke. Now, if not, Ask him to try again, see if there's any chance at all he could be in Melbourne. Right. You might as well have stayed the night. Had a female cat, didn't I? There's a crook out in the hot room. Don't fiddle with it, eh? Right. Good day. You look like you've been working hard already. I'd like some steam, then use your gym for a while. Four bucks and I'll chuck in a good gun. Haven't seen you here before. Nope. You're on business or holiday? I was in a couple of days ago. Met your brother. Hmm. I heard what happened. I'm sorry. Really sorry. Getting a lot of cooperation from Sydney and Brisbane. Not much else, sir. The only common denominator between the other three killings was gambling. None of the victims knew each other. Well, we'll have to try and connect them with Jock. There's a good chance it's not even the same bloke. Well, if we've got any choice, I hope it's not. Thanks. Was it worth it? Killing Jock. Did it make you feel good? You didn't have to go that far. What are you, a, a bloody nutcase? Didn't you know when to stop? I knew exactly what I was doing. And I enjoyed it. Look, you know, Mr. White, ever since those joggers got skittled last year, there's more yellow tracksuits around than boobs on a beach. More than half my regulars wear them. Do you have any contact with Sydney or Brisbane? Recently, you mean? No, any time. Well, we spent a winter in Brisbane once, in the old days, but no mates up there. Don't suppose you've heard anything since yesterday? No, I put the word out there. 
you know anyone who practices karate? Huh? Well, the evidence suggests that your brother was killed by somebody skilled in karate, or a similar art. How'd you go? Nothing. What do you got? Not much more. Sydney and Brisbane haven't been able to put a name or a face to our pro killer yet, if he exists. Any connection between Jock and Points North? Not directly. The Sydney squad are watching the gambling syndicate. Apparently the syndicate has front men in each state. They spread money around the race courses and uh, arrange for a bit of an edge now and again. It's been going on for years. Yeah, but apparently there's a new Melbourne agent, Clive Brooker. Well, turn him inside out, Philip. He's tied up with a big mob. Anything can happen. Right. Our own intelligence men may be able to help. Harry, just thinking about that Brisbane and Sydney thing. If it is one man, and if he is in Melbourne, he probably would have trained at one of the local clubs. He'd be taking a chance, wouldn't he? And not really, if no one knows him. Even so, he'd be better off keeping to himself. Well, assuming he is who he is, he's probably got an enormous ego. <laughs> Head like a pumpkin, I'd reckon. He'd be a fighter. So he'd have to train regularly with people of his own standard, otherwise he'd lose his edge fast. Well, what if he did go to a local club? I mean, we don't know his name or description. Oh, it could be any stranger. But the clubs would remember a stranger that good. Especially if he tried to prove himself king of the mountain. Senior Detective Deegan, Mr. No. Homicide. Can you spare me a moment? Where the hell have you been? I see the coppers at the gym. They know. How would you know, you mug? You're smashed out of your mind. I tell you, they know. I know. That's what he said. They're looking for a karate expert. You're guessing, you mug. Tate's a clean skin. I don't know anything about him. I do. What do you mean? You don't know what it was like. 
drinking with Turk last night and knowing everything. And then done it this morning with that nutcase. Now, get this straight, Freddy. I'm running this show. Old Jock done the wrong thing and he got what he was asking for. Now I got Tate to back me up. Anyone else who does the wrong thing will get the same. Including you. You get the message? What's got into you? I'm going places, Freddy. And you either go with me or nowhere. Now I'm going to pour black coffee into you until you're sober enough to spread the dough for me at the dogs tonight. And you better stay sober. Got the intelligence report on Brooker. Oh, Lieutenant. They've been onto him for quite a while. He runs a fairly successful business, but they reckon it's just a front. An excuse to get him off and around the courses. He's a heavy gambler, but only when he's got information. Half his luck. Apart from a couple of part-time drivers who appear to be straight, his only other employees are Frederick Peter Knight. The ex-jockey, warned off a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's the one. He uses them to pick up information, lay money off around the tracks. No heavies. He's never employed any on a permanent basis, but is believed to have had guys worked over from time to time when they've owed him money. And the drum is that he's put in a lot more money around lately. Ties in with the report he's fronting for a Sydney mob here. What if he did have Jock worked over and it went too far? Maybe. Bit slender though, we're gonna need more than whispers. but we're short-handed. We'll be up again tonight. Thanks. Oh, you should have had enough for one day. What's up? Just thinking about your brother. Guess none of us know when it's coming. No more. I've got no room to put it. If it was grog, you'd find room. Now get it into you. Oh, good day, Turk. Come in. Listen, mate. It's about poor old Jock. Well, what can I say? I know. Thanks. If there's anything I can do, son, you just let me know. Well... <coughs> what happened to you? Ah, oh, he got on the grog this morning. Turned up here full as a copper's boot. I had the coppers around this morning. They, uh, they get anything? I don't know. They want to know about that blue you have with Jock. Ah, uh, it was nothing. Nothing. Owed me a few bucks, that's all. I wasn't real dirty on him. But, well, you know, Jock, you had to be hard on him for his own good to like a coffee. Yeah, no thanks. 
Yeah, they wanted to know if you had anything going in Sydney and Brisbane. Know anything? <coughs> you all right? Yeah. Wrong hole. <coughs> I, uh, I don't see how he could have. Neither do I. I'm going to find out, though. Why don't you let the cops handle it? I will. But I reckon I can get some answers they can't. Give them a hand. Yes, you've got some pretty good contacts, but uh, mine are better. You reckon? Look, mate, I, I wouldn't do this for everyone, but, well, you and Jock, we've been good mates. I don't want to see you get into trouble by sticking your neck out. You leave it to me. What are you going to do? Well, you go back to the gym and wait, and I'll phone you there. I know just the man to talk to about this. What's up, mate? He's elephants, that's what's up. You go back to the gym, son. I'll phone you there. Yes? Okay, Mr. Brooker. It'll be my pleasure. He hasn't even done nothing. Nosing around. He starts asking questions in the right places about Sydney and Brisbane, he'll come up with some answers. So warn him off. I tried to warn him off, he wouldn't stop running until he got to Russell Street. We might be able to get off a charge over Jock, but we won't beat it a second time. You'll be a little man all your life, Freddy. I've got too much going for me to let Turk or anyone else ruin it. He's my mate. Forget it, Freddy. Or would you like me to have Tate have a little practice run on you first? He turned up on Monday night at the Samurai Combat Center. That's a karate club. The instructor said he could train with them. He produced a black belt and claimed to hold a third dan in Shorinjai Kempo. Big yours? Oh, that's a Japanese form of shale and temple boxing. Huh? He also claimed to have studied Chinese arts in Hong Kong. It'd be quite a handful. Yeah, well, the crunch came during fighting practice. A young brown belt got a kick into the bloke's body and got wiped right out for his troubles. The instructor stopped the training and ordered him out of the club. How'd he take that? Well, he didn't like it, but probably didn't fancy his chances against 30 or so students all at once. Where's the instructor now? He's downstairs with the artists, and he's given me a pretty good description of the bloke. Name? Call himself Tate. Sydney intelligence squad's picked up a whisper that our bloke may be down here. Nothing more? No. We've got a lead on a suspect using the name Tate. Picture's on its way. He's going to be hard to find with what we've got, but not impossible. Put out a general broadcast of his name and description. I want the cooperation of every CI branch in the metropolitan area. Then to check every hotel, motel and boarding house on their patch. Right, we'll get copies of the picture to him as soon as possible. Yeah. Phil, you and Mike get on the phone. Check every car rental firm in Sydney and Melbourne. If you draw a blank there, start on the car yards. He's waiting at the gym. Good. What about him? No worries. Tate. Tate, right. try Get those spelling. Homicide, Sergeant White. Ah, oh, good day, Turk. I've been putting a few things together, Mr. White. What'd you come up with? I don't know, really. You've... Have you got time to come over and have a yarn? Well, not really. Is it important? You blokes are no better than me. I'll tell you what, I'll send someone over. The bloke who's with me this morning. Okay. Uh, tell him the gym's closed, but if he hammers on the door, I'll let him in. Yeah, fine. Okay. Little job for you, Michael. 
We're closed. Oh, sorry, Matt, we're closed till this evening. Right, thank you. I got it. Budget renter car let out a sedan on Monday afternoon. The client had a New South Wales licence and identification in the name of James Tate. And the car was delivered to the Garside Motel St Kilda. Looks like we'll need these. Yes, make that $500 to win on Meaty Frank. Martin's Luck, 1000 Lucky Jack for the place, 1000 Celebrity, 500 to win. Freddy? Well, Freddy who? Look, calm down. I, I can't understand you. Where are you calling from? Harry? On their way, they should be here by now. Let's see how you go now, mate. Chuck it in. Don't want a chance. Are well, still alive? What about Turk? That's under control. I better go and give Mike a hand. Uh, book Brooker into the hospital. I'll see you back at the office with Freddy. Right.
I can't make any promises, Freddy, but your cooperation will be taken into account. Yeah. How's Brooker? He'll live. He's under guard at the hospital. Is he okay? Just a sore head. Well, that's good. I never wanted to hurt no one. You'll make a full statement? Including the names of your Sydney employers? Why not? That was a good punch. I should have finished you quicker. I don't understand you. I just don't understand you at all. Everyone has something that turns them on. If you cannot find the answers within yourself, Michael, then where will you seek? The wisdom of the masters is like a finger pointing to the moon. It is foolish to ignore the finger until the way to the moon is clear. But take care. Do not become so entangled with the finger that you never see the moon. Tate and Brooker were convicted of the murder of Jock Peart. Tate is serving a sentence of life imprisonment. Brooker, 15 years. Freddie Knight gave evidence for the Crown, but was not presented for trial. As a result of Tate's confession to two murders in Sydney and one in Brisbane, a number of men were convicted as accessories in those cities. Thank you.